Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to a special edition of 1337 Wine TV, Elite Wine TV. Um, this is episode number 250 of the show. So I decided to do something a little special. As you can tell, I don't have the green screen on right now. I'm not even using any fancy microphones. I'm taking all the audio from the camera. Um, so everything's not going to be looking as great and as sounding so great right now. But we're going to start, this episode is really going to be all about how do you do video podcasting? All right, so starting with the roots, I just got a camera and me and a tripod, okay, and the computer, but ignore the computer right now. Anyway, um, hey, I had my old laptop, so, but you just have a camera, a tripod, and, and I don't even have the lights on. I just have the whatever lights coming through the window. This is old school. If you watch this way back in the day with episode one, Wearing the same shirt. Um, this looks pretty familiar. I was a little bit farther this way. I had more of the wall behind me instead of seeing the kitchen in the background. But the bottom line is, this is how everything started. Sitting at the table, nothing fancy. Maybe I would turn the light on above me, but a lot of times it was in the afternoon, I was letting the, the natural light come through. So, how do you go from this to Okay, so how do we go? So, <laughs> all right, so this is how we're gonna do things. I uh, just showed you the green screen real quick. I went from this to this. And um, so we're starting with kind of basic. I'm cheating a little bit um, right now because I want the audio to be better. But, um, so how do you do all this? Well, first of all, you need to get a camera. Now, I can't show you the camera I'm using because I don't, I mean, I have a camera I could use, but for the simplicity of trying to get all this done with the other two shows I'm recording today, I'm um, just using the one camera. All right, so I start off with the Flip Mino HD. Uh, great little camera, and uh, it's you can still find it out there. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised you still find them out there, but um, uh, they're not made anymore. Okay, so what was good about the Flip Mino? Uh, it was cheap. It provided HD. Um, and it was really one of the first compact eight cameras that provided some, some really quality, uh, decent quality uh, video. Um, you can pick them up at Amazon for $129 still. All right, so that's the cheapest way to go. Now, if you happen to have, um, if you happen to have a, a digital camera, you know, a regular camera like this, uh, that can shoot video, uh, which, you know, I bought this camera much later, but, um, uh, you can use those if you're going to be doing shorter form videos. Now, as many of you know, my, some of my videos last, well, my old school videos would last 10 minutes or so. That camera can handle it. That particular camera can only record 20 minutes of video at a time. So you can do that, but at some point you're going to have to take breaks and uh, have segments, which um, again, I could record my current version of the podcast with that camera um, since the, the segments are usually no longer than 20 minutes, but sometimes they get long. All right, so the Mino could, could film, could record a lot longer than that. Um, but if you, if you are on a budget, that's what I would suggest. Now, I have the Kodak ZI-8. Picture of that above somewhere. Now, when I bought it, I bought it at Target, and I bought it for $179. I don't know what's going on. Uh, apparently, Kodak doesn't make it anymore. And you go to Amazon, it's $400. Ridiculous. However, it's a great camera. Now, the big deal about the camera was that it had an external microphone. It has an external microphone input. Besides the fact that it, it does um, HD recording and it uses a, a SD card, whereas the um, Flip Mino didn't have an H, you, you didn't have a card you could install, so you didn't have any expansion capabilities for how much video recorded, and you had um, an internal battery. You know, 
iPhone people, we all know what that's like, right? The battery dies, that's it. Well, the reason I moved from the Flip to the Kodak was that my battery literally died. It didn't just run out of juice, it literally pooped out. So I would either have to buy another camera or pay to repair it. And the Flip people, when they were still open, told me that it was gonna cost more money to repair the camera than to just buy another one. So I bought the ZI8. The big reason was it has the external microphone input. Now, you can do a lot of things with it. Some people have actually plugged the microphone directly into it, which I have done. Um, but if you want to do, next thing you want to do is try to get good audio. Now I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using my Zoom and I've got the lavalier mic hooked up, but I went wireless because that allowed me to not have to be con uh, uh, encumbered by a wire and making sure I had a long enough wire between me and the camera. Um, also, if I was going to have more than one person, um, I could do the wireless thing. So anyway, wireless. Now this is the Asden, uh, let's quickly get to that. The Asden, uh, I had all these, uh, whatchamacallit, Asden WMS Pro wireless microphone system. Now what it does is it comes with a transmitter, a receiver, uh, and then it also comes with uh, a, a cheap handheld microphone. It works, it does its job. Um, but you get the, the receiver and the transmitter, that's really what I wanted. Now that combination was 157, well it's currently $157. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it's about the same amount of money. Um, I did get um, two more of these without the microphone and it was like $140 or whatever, okay? so. What that, what that does is allows you to have a wireless recording. Now, what you want to do is you want to try to get off of the camera mic as much as possible because people will put up with crappy video, but they won't put up with crappy audio or they won't put up with it as long. So um, you can do that. Now, wireless transmitters, uh, there's VHF and UHF versions. Um, I think it's the UHF, no, I think it's the VHF that's the better of the two. But when you're talking the distance I had here, it wasn't that big of a deal. Now. I did buy two of these, or two sets, and that was so that I could do things like uh, have more than one person mic'd at a time. What I initially bought was the Asden Cam 3 on camcorder MIDI audio mixer. It's about 65 bucks um, on Amazon. Problem with this mixer is it's called a passive mixer. And these microphones really don't put out a lot of um, signal or not that much and it worked but I didn't really mix anything it was just that I had to put everything on maximum and then the camera got it and it wasn't really the best uh, very disappointed in it I wouldn't suggest buying it um, if you're going into that route where you're gonna have more than one person and you use wireless mics then I suggest you get something like this this is the Behringer uh, Xenix 502 it's a four channel Oh, actually it's five channels, um, mixer. Um, it works, it does a good job. It was, um, let's close out that tab. Um, it's around $40. Um, even with the inputs from here, it still was a little quiet, but I was able to boost the signal so the camera could work. Now, the big thing about when you're working with wireless is interference. So, um, cell phones, electronics, those can interfere with it. If, if those of you that have been watching the show for a long time would know you get that little bit of static occasionally. I'd move around and you get this static. And that was in the wireless mic. And this is why I went with this, the solution I have now. Um, but the other thing to remember, and that the, the, the ASD in here is two channels. You can't put both microphones and receivers on the same channel or else you get a bunch of really bad, really, really bad um, interference, um, which Again, if, uh, I think it was episode 200 or so. I had uh, I did over at Sessie's uh, Wine Shop, and her and I had the wireless microphones. We did like three shows, I think, that night. And Melissa had the handheld, which I didn't use the handheld from Asden. I have an old Shure, I think it's a Shure M58, or maybe it's not even that one. I just have an old microphone I've had for, for years. And I used that, and I plugged it directly into the line input. And you know, Melissa's microphone was the best sounding of everybody's because um, it actually is a decent microphone. But um, so if you're going to do that, make sure you don't uh, mess up and have everything on the same channel because that is bad. Okay. All right. So we've got that going. So 
I've got ambient light. So what you want to do is, um, is I'm, I'm really kind of washed out right now and it's really not that bright in the room, but I'm facing west. The sun is, you know, it's around four, almost five o'clock in the afternoon in the summer in Texas. Um, the sun's coming right through the windows. Uh, I do have a lot of windows here and those of you who've seen pictures of the set know that I've got a lot of windows here. Um, and I've got, you know, kind of sheer curtains covering the window. So not all the lights coming through, but the light, the camera where that window is, that, that um, curtain is completely open. Um, I used to, I usually would kind of close it off to get a little more soft light, but I'm going to fix all this in post anyway. Um, try not to do, try not to worry, not trying to have the attitude, I'll just fix it in post. You want to try to do the best you can prior to doing that because it just, it makes things difficult. Um, but anyway, um, natural lighting. So you want to try to use as much natural lighting as possible. Now, if you're going to be recording at night, you want to have indoor lighting that's bright enough. The, the uh, light above the table here is bright enough, but then I get a different look. I get a more yellow, um, I, I would even call it jaundiced look than this like pale white, you know, white as a ghost. Maybe I'll show you what the exact look is and then at, before and after type of uh, color correction there. But um, using ambient light. And then if you get, into, you get really into lighting, you have different color temperatures. So basically the color temperature of the, of the incandescent light casts a different color um, versus the sunlight, which is more pure white light. It looks bluer, okay? Another thing, if you do buy the Kodak ZI8, or I, I'm assuming this will work with, the, um, with other Kodak cameras, uh, I would suggest you buy this remote control. You can get it for like 20 bucks off of Amazon. Um, it is a Kodak remote control. Um, if you don't want to spend the $400, which I understand, if you're going to spend $400 on a camera, you might as well get a regular video camera. Um, Kodak put out something called the Play Touch. Now, again, this is also another discontinued camera. Um, but it's the only other Kodak camera, mini camera, that has an external mic jack. Um, it, it got reviews about the same as the Kodak ZI8, but a lot of people seem to prefer the ZI8. Right now it's only 86 bucks. It was normally $200 on Amazon, so um, you're still able to get that. But the remote control for me is very important because especially something like this, I can stop and start the camera without having to get up, go to the camera, and that was one of the biggest hassles once I started adding all this equipment that's kind of on the sides and next to the camera. It makes it more difficult just to get up and start and stop when I do multiple shows or in this case, multiple segments. All right, so that's the very, very basics of, of doing that. You have your camera, you have ambient lighting, uh, suggest you get a microphone that if you wanna do the wireless route, which it's not exactly cheap, um, but you can do, the, the cheapest one is to get one of these lavalier mics, um, which I, I don't have the exact model. I'll, maybe I'll try to get a link below of one of the models that everybody uses, I think the ATR, 3550, I think is what it is. Uh, it's a powered lavalier. You have to put a battery in it, okay? Um, and you just have to get a cable long enough. I would suggest something around 20 feet to plug into the camera. So that's probably the cheapest route besides using the on-camera mic. All right, so now let's go into a little bit more sophisticated stuff. We're gonna do the next segment here. We're gonna talk about doing some lighting and uh, uh, I'll even kind of, I'll, I'll start talking about the, the audio I do here. Whoa, what happened? All right, so uh, real quick, it's been a couple days since I started all this whole thing about how to be a video podcaster, and um, obviously in different clothes, uh, come home from work. Um, don't have any lights on in the background. You can't even see anything in the background. So quickly, let's kind of talk about that. Um, if you can avoid having a background uh, behind you, if you can have a, just a straight wall behind you, that's ideal. So you don't have anything going on behind you if there's people in the house. They're not going to inter interrupt you. Uh, you're not seeing stuff like you know the kitchen and the dining area in the background, that kind of stuff. So everything's really dark. It's really actually pretty late at night. I'm home from work. Um, I actually went out for dinner after work, so uh, we got that going on. All right. So now, so we got the one light happening. Now this is uh this is what the light looks like. It is the um, you can get this off of Amazon. I'll have links for everything below on the, whether it's Amazon link, my Amazon link as far as my, um, what is it, my store, my Amazon store. Um, so as far as my Amazon link there, but um, I'm going to try to find the, um, whatchamacallit here, 
the light. Here we go. Actually, that's not the light. That's the battery. And it's this one here. Okay, so this is the light. Now, this is uh, the, the company is newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. Um, again, the link below um, is the 160 LED CN160 dimmable ultra high power panel, blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of like stuff. But the bottom line is that um, it's got a, uh, it's got a, a dial here, a rheostat that allows you to change the brightness of the light. Okay. Um, what you, and then, it, then it's got some, uh, it's got some filters. This is the clear filter. So it's just really the fuser. Uh, but it's got a magenta and orange filter that helps you with color temperature. Um, the magenta gives you more of a bluer tint, gives you kind of that fluorescent lighting tint. And the magenta is more like incandescent. So we saw some of that earlier. Uh, I just used the diffuser just so it's more of a natural, uh, natural light. Um, what you want to do with this is, especially with these, it, you, can, you can do a couple things. You've got the AA batteries that you can do. And you can just buy AA batteries, you can buy rechargeables. But what I did is I bought um, a camera battery, um, which I'll have a link for that one. And uh, that's just, um, let me pull that up. It, it said, again, newer sells this. It is the newer NPFH70 battery. And it says for the Sony Handycam, blah, blah, blah. And it's a bunch of like Sony cameras. So it's basically a Sony uh, Handycam battery but it fits in there. Um, there's a couple other uh, brand things. There's Panasonic and some other battery. You have a special adapter to put into the back, but you want the rechargeables. Um, one, it's gonna save you money in the long run and it's just easier. I mean, it's one battery I gotta put in there. Now I do have, this might be the battery. I have a battery that seems to have, I bought nine of them total um, because the idea I was gonna have was I needed to be able to have three sets of batteries going. Um, this, I think this is the battery, but one of the batteries seems to not, be holding its charge properly. I mean, th this is three dollars and forty-five cents right now on Amazon. It's pretty darn cheap. Uh, that uh, that light, I forgot to put the for the price, but I think it was like twenty bucks, nineteen dollars, maybe a little bit less. Um, but I mean, it puts out a lot of light. This is the only light I have on right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go into the next segment in here in just a second and talk about the other lights. But before I do that. Um, I'm gonna have a picture up here. I took a picture of what I have for the um, for the camera itself. So I have a tripod, and I, I think I've already shown the tripod. But I have this bracket, which actually, since there's no really no background behind me, I'll just have like a picture of the bracket. Um, but I bought it from Best Buy, and and honestly, buy it from Best Buy if you can, because the the brackets you can find on Amazon um, from all the reviews are pretty crappy. Um, the little metal things that you clamp your light on or the accessory apparently aren't secured properly, so they fall off. This is the Dynex, you know, Dynex is Best Buy's in-house brand. It's a Dynex video accessory bracket, and it says for most camcorders and cameras. Um, and this was $18. Um, you can order online, you just go to your local Best Buy. Should be about 18 bucks. I got the picture, should have already seen it there. Uh, and then I have another picture of how everything looks, the camera, the light, not on the tripod, but just a cam you know, the camera and the light. All right, so you've got that. So let's move on to uh, more sophisticated lighting. And um, I think, I don't know if I talked about the tripod. I, don't, I, I still have the tab up, so maybe I didn't. The tripod I used for the actual camera, I bought quite a while ago off of Amazon. Um, it is the Sunpak 59.4 inch Platinum Plus 5800D digital tripod. Um, it is currently, you can buy one new from 18, for $18. Um, they're just basically any tripod, just something that's you know big enough to d use. For this camera, and because I sit down mostly, I don't necessarily need a tall tripod, but you want one that's gonna be about at least, what's see, 12 times, 12 times five to 60 inches. So at least a five foot tripod, okay? You want something like that so that if you're standing, you've got enough height. You don't need necessarily the 72 inch, um, but all, all, the, all the ones I have are 60 inches. Well, 59.4 on this one. All right, so uh, let's, uh, now we'll stop here and we'll, sh we'll get the rest of the lighting up as far as the front lighting and we'll see how that goes. This is not completely fully bright. I kind of dimmed it a little bit. Um, I'm not used to shooting in this exact environment with the one light. 
I'm not sure if you can tell, but I can see the light kind of flickers, flickers a little bit. But um, it is, there's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's four indicator lights on the back of this. Uh, only three were lit. Um, so after a couple days of sitting in the light and not doing anything, it's held most of the charge. All right, so let's get the rest of the lighting going. All right, so now we've got the we've got three-point lighting going on. Not exactly the classic, quote, professional version of three-point lighting. Um, still have the light on the tripod, and that light is meant to illuminate the face and straight ahead. I've got two lights here angled up. They're actually more to, to light the set or light the table, not to light really anything behind me. Um, what you typically will have when you look at these, you know, professional um, video uh, places and film websites is that you'll have your light that's supposed to, you know, light up the eyes, okay? Um, you'll have one light off to the side to kind of illuminate, to, to have also kind of an illumination um, on, on your subject. And then you'll also have a light kind of off to this side to kind of give you a shadow effect. I don't really care about that. Plus, with this big table, I don't have the room to do that kind of stuff. So I really want the set lit in one light, okay? Pretty simple. Now, I have two other tripods. Uh, now, I did buy these trigger tripods um, off of Amazon, and I'll tell you which ones those are. No, not that. Dun, dun. When I had to um, change some stuff up, oh, maybe I don't have that one. I'll have a link to it below, but um, these were, um, oh, these, these are the Dynex. These are the Dynex, uh, it's a Dynex 60-inch um, inch tripods from, from Best Buy. That, that's all, they're, and I think they were like 40 bucks. Matter of fact, let's just uh, Dynex tripod Best Buy. Buy. Here we go. The 60 inch universal tripod, blah, blah, blah. 40 bucks. So um, get them up from your local Best Buy. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and set up the green screen. Um, and I may do some things. Uh, I forgot to take a picture, but I'm going to take a picture of the setup with the regular lighting without the actual actual lights on. Maybe I'll take a picture of the lights of the set and then I'll take a picture with the lights off with the natural in-house lighting. Uh, for the green screen, I, 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 my original idea was to get the camera out and show more of me putting up the green screen, um, but just because I have to like completely dismantle the set, what I'll probably do is maybe use, use the, this camera, the, my regular camera, and maybe take some video footage of that, of, of the actual green screen and not me actually setting it up. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. All right, so we've got the green screen set up. Now, I took a bunch of pictures of setting up the set, the tripod, the green screen, uh, everything else. So let's kind of go through a step-by-step. -step. All right, first of all, I didn't take a picture of the tripods by themselves, but set up your tripods. Now, what I do with the tripods, I try to make sure that the, the uh, horizontal parts are even. That way, the actual tripods, when you put everything all the way up, is, is, a, is, a, is level. Not that you're gonna see the top of the green screen, you're not, but it's just, you know, I want it, everything to be as level as possible. All right, um, hopefully, and I checked in the, view, in the viewfinder, the, uh, sorry, the, um, all you see is the green screen. You don't see any edges of the green screen. Now, this camera's pushed far as, as far back as possible so I can get the maximum amount of view here on the table, but the background, the green screen is a good, well, let's see here. Oops. And I didn't start my timer. That's okay. This green screen, and hopefully at some point, I don't know if my head's cut off or not. Probably is. But um, I'd say the green screen is one, two, a good four feet or so, maybe almost five feet behind me. So um, it's a good distance behind me. This is a, uh, so who, what is the green screen? Well, I bought this off of Amazon. I buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon. By the way, if you like me and you buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon, especially these electronics and other gadgets, not just the books, become a Prime member. Uh, I think it's $75 a year. You get free Prime two-day shipping. Um, 
and a lot of the items you can get with the free shipping. So I use it all the time. I, I, I order something, I got it in two days. All right, so this is the Cowboy Studio Photography 10 by 20 foot video chroma key video green screen and then and backport support system kit. All right, so what comes with it? Comes with the green screen. You'll also hear known as muslin, M-U-S-L-I-N. Um, two tripods and then a, uh, a bag, which in the picture, I'm pointing down there, you can't see it, but some of the pictures I show what I do with, with, uh, with some of the bags, but it comes with a, with a carrying case. Now, um, I took some pictures of it. Um, I bought separately, and you'll find if you go to Amazon, it'll, it'll be, there'll be a suggestion to get some clamps. Now, there's these clamps that a lot of people seem to buy called the Cheap Lights 6-piece 3.75-inch spring clamps. Only has three stars, 102 reviews right now. Um, basically, they're crap from what, I, from what I've read. So what I did is I went to Home Depot, and let me pull up that. Uh, so I went to the Home Depot, and I bought the two-inch spring clamp, so smaller than the other ones. Um, they're a buck 48 each, so a buck 50 each, whereas those other ones were, um, uh, how much were they? They were $7.25 for six of them. So, I mean, they're cheaper, but um, these things work just as, just as fine. Uh, a few things about them. Uh, I only have six of them, uh, so I have three on each side, and you'll have, I'll have pictures, not of each clamp on each side, but I have them, you know, fairly well spaced. You want to stretch the green screen as much as you can. Um, I don't have any background going on right now so you can see how, what the green screen looks like. The camera's gonna smooth out some of the edges, um, but you wanna have as few wrinkles in it as possible. Now, ideally, you'd like to just kind of keep it hanging all the time or have it attached to your wall, iron it all out, and that's great. Well, I have a, as you can tell from the pictures, this is the dining room. I don't have that luxury to leave this thing set up. So every time I do, uh, show when I'm done I take it off of the tripods and I roll it up and that's what I do I don't I don't uh, sit there and take the part the whole like top the top uh, thing and fold nice and neat the green screen it just takes too long plus honestly when you put the the top rail together it was really difficult I almost felt like at first I didn't think it was gonna fit and then once, and then trying to put the green screen on the top rail, uh, the crossbar, that's the word I'm looking for, the crossbar, I almost thought that it wasn't going to fit. It was a really, really tight fit. And once you got it over the uh, crossbar, it started working. So it was pretty good after that. Um, but you want to have it as, as stretched out as much as you can to eliminate the wrinkles. Now, that's because when you do your keying with the green screen, um, it makes it easier for your software to do that. Now, when I do make the show, I use Final Cut Pro 10, and yes, there's a ton of people out there that were the old Final Cut Pro 7 people that complained and moaned and about that it didn't do what they wanted. I came from Final Cut Express, so to me, Final Cut Pro 10 was phenomenal. Uh, the keyer on it is incredible. It pretty much, I don't almost, I have to do very little to get a really good key, well, and that's a subject of some other podcasts, but the idea is the keying is eliminating the green behind me. The problem is, if you wear a green shirt, or you have green bottles, like you have a white wine that's in a green bottle, if you notice some of my episodes, you can kind of see the background picture projected on those bottles. It doesn't look too bad, it actually kind of looks like you're looking through the bottle to the background, but you have to be careful about wearing green or having anything green other than the screen. Um, you can do blue if you'd like. Um, you can have any color that you want, but Blue and green are kind of the, the standard colors for that, um, just because they're, they're uh, well, the cameras typically, maybe not the ZIA, but your maybe your prosumer and professional cameras are designed to be sensitive a certain way to green, especially the, this, this part type of green. All right. Um, so you want to have everything taut as much as you can. And then um, the other thing that I do, and I'll have a picture of that, is I've got all of my all my cases, all my all my duffel bag type of things on the very bottom, so that not only do I have it stretched out sideways, I have it stretched vertically. Um, I have my really heavy duffel bag or or, or um, carrying case that has the now we're going to jump ahead a little bit. My boom mic stand. Um, 
This is the uh, on stage um, SB9600 tripod studio boom microphone stand. I bought it at Sam Ash locally. Um, and the reason I bought it at locally instead of, I buy all my stuff online pretty much, but I bought it locally because I needed to see these boom microphone stands in person. Um, I'm not, I don't have it set up because I don't use it in the, in, in the studio or in the house. It's really meant for if I'm going to go out in the field and I'm going to have an interview with somebody and instead of using the boom microphone, which I didn't have out, but it's in my backpack here. <clears throat> so this is the Audio Technica, here we go, Audio Technica ATR. 6550 video camera condenser shotgun microphone. Um, I can have it hooked up. If you watch the interview with Ceci, I have that actually working. So the audio comes from that. Um, I have it set up so that it's boomed over here. It's like a 70 something inch. Uh, see if I can look at the stats real quick. It's the boom itself is, is huge. It's 82 inches long and it has a seven pound counterweight on it. So, and that's almost a foot by itself. So it's really like a six foot boom. So I can have it off the side, off camera, and I can use this so that you don't see, ever see the microphone. All right. We'll go over some other stuff with the microphones in a little bit. All right. So, um, and that was, uh, well, it's, it's 95.81 on sale on Amazon. It's so normally $202, $203. I bought it at Sam Ash for 90, 90, 95, $99, somewhere around that. So basically everyone's selling it for a hundred dollars less than the suggested retail price, okay? Uh, and I, it's, it's awesome. It was an awesome stand, it's exactly what I want. And I used it as a counterweight with my, uh, with my green screen, okay? Um, so everything's all nice and taut. Now, the other thing is I have all the lighting going on, so I've got pictures of that. So how do you light the green screen? Well, there's a few things about lighting that I'm gonna go over uh, real quickly. First, I'm gonna tell you what, what lighting I'm using. The lights I'm using, and I've got pictures of them, are these, you see these yellow shop lights. They're, the brand is Bayco, 1000 watt halogen work light. Um, they're around $30 each. Uh, I bought two of them, and a lot of film students use these because they, they really illuminate. Well, you can use them as regular set lighting, but you can use them for green screen because they're, they're great lighting on the cheap. I didn't spend three, four hundred dollars on professional studio light boxes and soft boxes and blah, blah, blah. One thing I don't do, which um, uh, was really more because I, I tried it and, th and that particular day, the light, one of the lights bur uh, burnt out and I attributed it to what I did. But uh, one of my buddies here in San Antonio suggested using wax paper because that what it does is diffuses the light. But honestly, Final Cut Pro does such a great job of keying out the green that diffusing the light really doesn't matter. Um, plus, that way with the wax paper, I don't see like the little wisps of steam coming off and making me worried that the wax paper is about to catch fire. Um, so those are two things you want to do. Now, when you're using these lights, you want to have as even as possible of light. Now, hopefully, the camera is, is, is a fairly one shade of green behind me. But the camera is actually a lot more sensitive than our eyes to colors. So there's probably some hot spots on there. Again, the software, at least with Final Cut, does a really good job of identifying those hot spots and just kind of, you know, doing a general um, uh, keying so you don't really see them. It's really around the edges, okay? Around your edges and the edges of the table, that's where you really get that, that issue where you try to really tweak it to make it look more natural or at least not look so bad. All right, so you have those illuminating that. We have the three lights, the three LED lights uh, illuminating me. Now you don't, now I do get a bit of a spill from these lights. Now in general you don't want these side lights that are lighting the green screen to light your subject. But what I like about it is because of the background that I use, being that it's a, 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 a quote a warm background, has a bit of a yellow orange tint to it because it's the barrel room, right? These are incandescent lights, so they're gonna cast a warm glow. So they're, they're a quote, warm temperature for lighting. And they light the background, really it's just light the green, but they light me a little bit. So it makes it look like I'm kind of in the set. And that's kind of what you want the green screen to be. You want, I mean, obviously I'm in a green screen. It's not like I really have that barrel room. I mean, the, 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 the camera or the picture is a little bit 
too big because the actual camera, the actual uh, picture size, let's see, that's the actual picture size in Final Cut, if assuming that I paid attention to what I did and made it small. And now, this is the normal size, or the size that you normally see. I've zoomed in on the picture, so it's, it's a little bit bigger. But it doesn't look too bad. I'm not going to say it's professional Hollywood quality green screen, but it looks a lot better than some of the green screens I've seen some other people out there on the internet. Okay? The lights here, the LED lights, they're a different color temperature, so they're lighting me in a different temperature. And this is where lighting really becomes important. I talked about having the curtains open during the day. You have the sunlight coming through, that's another color temperature. So when you have mixed color temperatures, it's really important that you try to balance everything or have at least the lights that are powerful enough to counteract anything else. Like I don't have this light, like you saw in the pictures, you see there's light above the table. I try to remember to not have it on, especially at night. But this is how I light the room when I'm working. So sometimes I leave that light on by accident. Um, but you want your lighting to be as, as, as even as possible and to compensate that. Now, a lot of the stuff is, quote, fixed in the mix. Um, I'm not going to go through how you do color correction and all that. But suffice to say that with Final Cut, I do a lot of tweaking of the image. Uh, I also do a lot of tweaking, not a lot, but I do a little bit of tweaking with the audio. So let's, again, hopefully I remember to do this. Let's listen to the audio that I have set up without any enhancements. So, all right, so now I don't have any enhancements on there. It doesn't sound too bad. Actually, it's really good. Um, so how do I do the audio? Well, I've got that lavalier mic, and I think I mentioned it earlier, but just in case I didn't, I have the Zoom H1N, okay, uh, recorder. Now, I can use this by itself as a recorder. It has these dual little microphones, and you can use it kind of like an interview microphone. That's, what that's one of the reasons, or one of the things it's designed for. But I also have it plugged in to the, um, hello? Okay. Oops, I thought I was peeking there. Um, I have it plugged into the line in input. Um, so that I get a nice clean sound from things. Let's talk about, uh, so now let's go back to, all right, now I have that deeper voice, right? Uh, what I do is I, I increase the bass to give, so my, my voice isn't very deep, very, very bassy, but um, a bassier voice makes things sound better. So I do that to make it sound a little bit better for the audio. Now, one thing about the, um, the boom mic or having a microphone plugged into the camera like that, like using the microphone plugged directly in, is that I, use, I plug the camera into a power source. Now, I do have batteries for it. I have the battery in the camera right now, and I have two more of these. This is the official Kodak one, and then I have the cheap, the cheap one, and then it's like, I don't know, the cheap one was like 3 or $4 off of Amazon. This is like, I don't know, $15 to $20. Um, but if you're in the field and you don't have access to power, Make sure you have multiple batteries, just like, you know, cameras, right? But I have it plugged in. Well, unfortunately, you get what's called a ground loop. So you get this noise. It's not really pleasant. It kind of sucks. But you can fix it in the mix again if you have the right kind of software. I do have some software that fixes that, but I won't go into it. All right, so I've talked about the, I've talked about the shop lights, talked about the clamp, talked about the green screen, talked about the uh, boom. Yeah, $99.99 at Sam Ash. Talked about my Zoom H1 handy digital portable recorder available from Amazon for uh, it's $97.63. It's like around $100. Okay, the uh, the microphone. All right, we got that. Now let's say you're in a situation where um, you're kind of trying to be ultra portable. Now I have my ultra portable setup. Now I'm not going to give you pictures of my backpack, but I have a, basically a, a laptop backpack that can accommodate a 17-inch laptop. I bought it years ago, well before I ever thought about doing any type of um, video recording. I just wanted a, a backpack to, to use in Chicago because everybody has a backpack when you're in the city. All right, so the ultra portable thing um, has, well, the ultra portable, like when I go to Dallas or when I'm in Dallas this week, um, I'll have one of the lights. I'll have my main, the tripod I use for the camera, the camera, the little thing, I'll have this microphone, I'll have two of these little flexible tripods. Now these are really cool. Now this is the Dynex, uh, let's fix, the Dynex flexible tripod. They're 20 bucks at Best Buy. Um, there are, it's a knockoff or a generic version of the Gorillapod flexible ones, if you've seen those. But let's say I wanted to do some type of 
interview and I didn't have the boom mic because I was trying to be ultra portable and I didn't want to use lavaliers and all that, I could put this right here. I have this, this uh, boom, the boom, actually the microphone itself comes with an attachment so you can attach it to a tripod. So you can put it right here and all that. If you use these microphones, one thing to, to remember or to think about is there's a telemode and a normal mode. Tele, telemode is really more if you have it on the camera and you're trying to make it as tight as possible. When you're doing telemode like this, it's not so bad, but you want to have the, the microphone angled a little bit instead of straight down. However, you do want it straight down as much as you can, okay, but maybe angled a little bit. If you have it on the camera doing this, if there's any background noise, it's going to pick all that up. If you have it above your subject, there's no, hopefully no sound coming from below. So even in telemode, it's not going to pick up anything outside because in telemode, most of this sound is gone. In normal mode, it's more of a cardioid uh, microphone and it will pick up sound from, from the sides, but not so bad. So anyway, if you do an interview and you want to be able to get both people, you can do this. All right. So this was 20 bucks. All right. Get rid of that one. I talked about this camera. Um, this camera, again, if you have one of these cameras, uh, I bought this one when I went to the, my trip to France. Uh, right now it's you know, $230. Excellent camera. I do highly suggest it. Um, I freaking love it. I've taken great pictures with it. So, boom. All right, batteries. I've been talking about batteries. Now, uh, with the wireless microphones and, um, that I had, okay, these take 9-volt batteries. I talked about using rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable batteries for 9 volts are impossible to find at a store. At least I haven't found them. Not that I really went out hard looking for them. But I found some on Amazon. Uh, again, link below. The Tenergy TN141 2-bay 9-volt smart charger. Um, you got four batteries and a charger. So um, I don't have... Oh, yeah, I do have them right here. So, I mean, just a good old 9-volt battery. Okay, 9-volt battery rechargeable. So if you're using your lavaliers, you're, you're golden. Golden like the child. All right. So uh, now that was $25 for everything. So the, the four batteries and the recharger. Awesome buy because with these with the lavalier mics, even though they may tell you you can get five or six hours out of it, I can't trust that because I can't say, well, I've used it for five or six hours because if the battery goes dead, there's nothing, there's nothing on the microphone or no way for you to know that it's stopping recording unless you have somebody monitoring the sound. When you're the one-man band, you have to have ways to know that you, you're, you're doing okay. It's like when I'm recording on the camera, as long as I see the little red light on, I know I'm good. So when I don't have it plugged into power like I've had happen before, the battery died. So either plug it into to an outlet or I put a new battery in there. Um, so talked about that. Uh, the battery for the for the Kodak camera, I bought uh, like okay, so like the cheapo battery, which is this one, I bought this is actually two batteries and a charger for six bucks off of Amazon. And then uh, what is this? The camcorder battery, blah 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 blah. Oh, just the uh, or just the charger itself for this because I have an, an extra charger. Um, that was like three bucks off of Amazon. All right. The um, okay. So the music people. That's oh. So um, I thought it came with the carrying bag, but it may not have. Oh, it didn't. It didn't. So the the big boom mic stand did not come with a carrying case, but on stage makes one. And what's great about this? Not only does it carry that, but it carries all three of my tripods. Okay, so again, not ultra portable, but portable. If I want to bring the entire set, like I know I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to need the, the, the boom mic, I've got something. So instead of trying to carry multiple tripods and doing all that, I've got carrying bags. Again, link below, 28 bucks off of Amazon. Talk about the microphone. Wow. Okay, so sounds like a lot of money, and it can be. Um, but if you're using all these things and you're using them right, it, a lot of trial and error. Um, again, when I start editing this, I may find that I'm too bright. A lot of times I find that I'm too bright. It's washed out. You can see it with, with wine labels or, or the white line, wine labels are very washed out. It's kind of hard to see the writing. So I try to make the lighting of the set a little bit dimmer because the camera actually is compensating for it. Now this particular camera has three settings. It has daytime, indoor, and night. Um, honestly, I don't remember what I have it set for. I think I have it set for daytime because the lights are bright. Um, 
But since I don't have a way to really see everything, um, I can't really tell on this side of the camera how things look. Um, now I think I may have mentioned, if I didn't, we'll mention it now. I took a picture of it, of course. I have a, I have a makeup uh, mirror behind the camera hanging by the window. And what that does is when I sit here, I can see the camera, I can see the viewfinder of the camera, and all it really is is make sure I didn't cut my head off. I don't really see the sides. I have to rely on looking around to see the sides. All right, so that's the basics of what you need to do this. How are you going to make it look better? Well, that's a subject of, of another podcast. Um, however, I do highly suggest uh, Video Maker Magazine. Um, and they've been awesome. I've been reading a lot of their stuff about green screens. Um, but videomaker.com, go there. Um, and then just in general, like I'm, I've watched a lot of videos about three-point lighting, about lighting and color temperature. If you if you got a photography friend, that's awesome. If you have an iPhone 4 or 4S that has a front-facing front facing camera, there's a light meter app on here that, for me, it's a little bit complicated because I don't understand. It's more of a, not a video light meter, it's more of a photography light meter because it tells you what f-stop to use. But you can kind of convert it once you get kind of get used to it. Problem with this, with this phone, it's a 3GS. So I can do this and I'm, I'm getting the light shining directly into here. What you want to do is you want to have your phone, your light meter, and I don't have $300 spent on a light meter for this show. Um, but you want to have it so that it's, it, the light, it's, it's registering what light's reflecting down here. Well, I can't do that when the phone's upside down because they can't go, oh, what does it say? There's no way to like freeze it. So I have the app. It, it could be useful, but use, I'm using my eyes. If you use your eyes and through trial and error, you kind of realize what's too bright, what's too dark, you'll figure it out. That's actually going to do it for the, the whole thing about how to do a video podcast. Um, you can get as as expensive as you want. I mean, again, I still use my ZI8. I think it does a great job. I will eventually move on to uh, the can the camera I'm looking at is a Canon Vixia HF500, HFM500, whatever. It's the newest Vixia uh, line. Um, and the big thing about that is number one, a remote control, which the remote control is finally available by itself. The 500 doesn't come with one. The prior model does, but it's more expensive than the new model because no, that's not made anymore. But it has a remote control and that way you can stop and start. And you actually do some other things like zoom and all that. But then I would also have the viewfinder. I can turn it facing forward and I can see if I'm framed correctly. I can zoom without having to get up. Uh, and it's a wireless remote. So that's the next, that's actually the next and probably final piece of equipment I'm eventually going to buy for all this. I have basically everything I need now. I've got my three lights, I've got my shop lights, I've got my green screen, I've got audio stuff. Um, you know, I've got a lot of things that I, some things I don't really use, but it's like kind of backup, like those nine volt batteries. I don't really ever use the wireless that much, but I have the wireless microphones and I have the batteries for them. Um, I may have mentioned it before on another podcast. I got these battery containers. Uh, it contains all my batteries. I have two of them. Um, I got the D cell ones so that way they fit the, the, the camera or the video camera batteries for, for the lights. Um, but then you can put these in your double A's. Um, that's what the zoom takes. I have rechargeable double A's though. I still am using my supply of regular double A's. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope this was informative. I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, I probably threw some, threw some, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, ads in there. Uh, ideally, what I was supposed to do was somewhere early on, I was supposed to do a quote ad, not, not the blip.tv ad um, for some stuff, but I'll reserve that for the wine show. Um, real quick, video hosting, don't host it on your website. I suggest blip.tv. Um, there's some revenue sharing there with that. Um, there's some distribution stuff with that. Now, honestly, for someone that doesn't really have a big budget, that's if, other than YouTube or places like Vidler, which actually Vidler, you can't do any personal accounts anymore, so you got to pay for those. So really outside of Vidler, I mean, I'm sorry, YouTube, maybe Vimeo, which I am on Vimeo too, um, there's really nowhere really great to put your video up other than like YouTube, it's just on YouTube. Nothing wrong with YouTube, but I use Blip.tv to... to um, distribute to a lot of places. Many of you 
watch on TiVo. And that's how you're getting it. Blip.tv sends it out. Um, TiVo subscribes to the RSS feed and that's how it pulls in the video. Most of the time, 99% of the time, he gets the video. Every once in a while, the, for some reason, it doesn't pick it up and so you miss an episode, which means you have to come to the website. All right, so that's gonna do it. Come to the website. I've got all the links below for everything that I, that I use. Uh, friend me up, subscribe to iTunes, hit the, uh, hit the donate button if you wanna throw a few ducats my way um, and for, to pay for wine. Not necessarily for, you know, I have most of the equipment, so I'm not really looking for you to send me $500 for a camera, but you know, pay you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks for a bottle of wine, and um, that's gonna do it. Uh, next week, we're back to doing some wine reviews and Wine 101. Um, I'm going to Dallas this week for TechSom. I'll put a link below for that. That's the Texas Sommelier Conference. This is my third year going. I'm very excited about going. Uh, they've expanded it to three days. And uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot of my fellow Texas wine people, wine bloggers, and um, there's gonna be a huge amount of master sommeliers there. Um, last year was the most amount of master sommeliers in one space ever in the world. And I'm sure this year it'll be even more. And these guys are awesome. Um, if you haven't heard of it, try, uh, seek out the preview for the movie Somm, S-O-M-M. It's coming out, and I think in October or November, it's gonna be premiered at the Napa Valley Film Festival, I think it is. Um, looking forward to that. I know a couple, not like really well, but I know a few of those guys that are in the movie. Um, I recognize them, so that way I've, I've, said, I've said hi to them a couple times, and I, we follow each other on Facebook and Twitter. So uh, that's gonna do it. Again, thank you for coming in. It's been a long episode. We'll see everyone again. We'll see everyone again next time.